Welcome to the teaching ministries of Dr. Jonathan Brady, Senior Pastor and Teacher of Truth and Fellowship Ministry. Enjoy this teaching and expect to hear a word for your life. Ready to talk about faith. I absolutely love faith because that is my life. That is how I live. That is my lifestyle. And I'm telling you, without faith, I would not be here. So um, tonight we're going to go ahead and go into it. Our faith is going to increase. God's going to do some amazing things. We're going to see some amazing things that are documented in the scripture. And um, it's just going to be amazing. My favorite word, y'all. It's going to be amazing. So y'all, let's go ahead and go to Habakkuk 1 and 5. We're going to take it to the NIV translation. We're going to start right here. This is our foundational scripture. Habakkuk 1 and 5. NIV. I don't know that one by heart, so I need y'all help. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I don't know about y'all, but when I read that scripture, I was like, church out. Hold on. Uh-uh, go back. We're going to stay right there at the fifth verse. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. Now that's past tense, y'all, which means there are some things that happened before this scripture that have already been set in place that were amazing. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. That's God speaking directly to us. I don't know about y'all, but that definitely gets me super pumped and super hyped for 2020. My 2020 about to be lit. Faith for the amazing Wendy. Stay focused. Stay focused. All right. This is what we're going to understand from this scripture, y'all. This is what we're going to understand. Number one, if God shows us, it's not too far off. We can already see that from that scripture. He says, I'm going to do something in your days. That's already a promise from God. So when he shows us something, it's not too far off. It's not too far-fetched, and it's not too far from us grasping it. But it is our responsibility to appropriate our faith for it to naturally manifest. Y'all got that? You know what that means? That means when God shows you something, it's your responsibility to take the faith that he has placed in you, apply it to what he has shown you for it to naturally manifest in your life. And our faith must catch up with the plan of God. How many of y'all have ever had a dream or you've been sitting there or people call it daydreaming and you just see something and you're like, man, that was so good. How many of y'all ever experienced that? That's God. That's God showing you what you can have for yourself, but it takes you appropriating your faith to get to it. Our faith has to catch up with what God has done. God has already done everything and he knows every strand of hair on our head. So what makes you think that he hasn't planned out every single day of your life? But we have to appropriate our faith in order to get to it. We see some things in the Bible I was reading today, and I was like, oh, that's so good. So, you know, y'all know the story. Cause let me tell you, I ain't write the scripture down, so y'all stick with me on this. Y'all y'all stick with me. Y'all already know. <laughs> you know, when Jesus was sleeping in the boat, and they was on the water, and the, um, the storm came on the water, and the disciples started spazzing. Y'all excuse my words. That's not in the Bible. But, you know, they start like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? You know, the storm, this and that. So they went to Jesus, and Jesus was like, where y'all faith at? What y'all doing? Man, storm, sit down somewhere. And he went back to sleep. Have you ever thought about that? Like, I read that today and was like, not only is my mouth powerful, but my faith put into action causes things to happen immediately. Like, Jesus just got clean, got up. You know, like like us, I was telling them the other day in the office, I got up one morning and I felt tired. So I was just sitting there like, you know how when you're a young person and y'all wake, you wake up and you just sit on the edge of the bed like you don't know what's going on. Like, you got to catch, hold up now. I got to catch up to what's going on. You got to get yourself together. Jesus ain't had to do none of that. Jumped up and said, Storm, chill out. And lay back down. And the storm chilled. The storm was like, my bad, Jesus. I didn't know you was on that boat. Like, <laughs> that's how bad we are, y'all. We can open our mouths, appropriate some things, say some things, and immediately things go into action. They check themselves like, oh, my bad. 
My bad. I didn't know that was you, Pastor Winnie. If I knew that was you, I sure wouldn't have, I sure wouldn't have revved up on you. I wouldn't have tried you like that. Y'all ever thought about them situations in your life? That situation wouldn't have tried you if you would have just opened your mouth. That's all it takes is for you to open your mouth and be like, man, I ain't even have to go through all of that because all I had to do was appropriate my faith. And then number two, we look at the amazing thing about faith is we don't need permission to use it. We don't have to ask anybody to use faith. I thought about that today. It was like, yo, that's so amazing. In fact, God commands us to use it. Let's go to uh, Hebrews eleven sixteen. Let's look at Hebrews eleven sixteen. Y'all know I don't know any of these by heart. We're gonna go to um, King James. Did I write down the right scripture? The one that says, "Without faith, it's impossible to please God." I guess I do know it by heart. That's that's not the right scripture, but that scripture <laughs> eleven and six. Thank you. 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Look at that first part. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. We don't have to ask somebody's permission to please God. Whatever God shows us and whatever we release from our mouths, as long as it's in his will, we don't have to go to anybody and say, can I appropriate my faith? Can I apply my faith to this and have it happen in my life? It is the plan of God and it is the will of God for your life. And you don't have to get anybody's permission. That's good. That excites me to know that I don't have to wait. What God has planned for me is not hindered on somebody else. It's all on me. So if you're not where you want to be, open your mouth, appropriate your faith, and you don't have to wait for anybody. As long as it is in the will of God, you've qualified that desire with God, there's nothing that's holding you back other than you appropriating your faith. All right, now, number three. When God shows us things, he trusts us with it. Pastor talked about this a couple weeks ago, that um, that God, when God shows us things, he reveals things to us. That means he trusts us. Think about that. Let's think about your imagination. How many of y'all have an imagination? Everybody, please raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> Everybody has an imagination. Your imagination is an amazing gift from God. Let me tell you why. Nobody can experience your imagination or see your imagination like you. And if God trusts you, with what, because he trusts you, not if, because he trusts you with what he's showing you in your imagination, you have the capacity to have it. You just gotta appropriate your faith. I had to learn that when I, um, when I came here. I am, um, I'm the visual arts director, so it is my responsibility to make sure that I visually connect anyone that comes in contact with the ministry to the vision that God has given our man of God. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all, when I first came, I was all over the place with ideas. I had ideas from everywhere. I did. Oh, we should do this. Oh, we should do that. Oh, we should. And I hadn't tapped into God like that yet. I was, I was not, I had not tapped into God. I just had a lot of ideas. And I didn't understand what was going on that it wasn't connecting with the vision that he had given our man of God. I really didn't know, but it was because I didn't respect and value the imagination that God had given me. See, I was still operating in childish things when I first came here. I was entertaining a lot of stuff and I was just doing a lot of childish stuff. I was just in, I was participating in. And because I was operating in those childish things, I couldn't do adult things. It takes adult things to function in a vision, y'all. It takes adult things for God to trust you with certain things. The scripture tells us that. I got that scripture, y'all. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Let's go to the Passion Translation of that. Because this one right here hit me home. Thirteen, eleven, The Passion. There we go. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. 13, 11. We almost there, y'all. There we go. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters. For I saw things like a child, and I reasoned like a child. 
But the day came when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. Keep it right there. Stay right there. That's what happened when I got here. I was a child. I spoke about childish matters. I saw things like a child and I reasoned like a child. I threw tantrums, y'all. Why we can't do this? Why we can't do that? Why we can't? I didn't understand it. But I was a child operating in childish things until I matured. But the day came when I matured, when I set aside my childish ways. That is what we have to do with the faith that God has given us. See, our imagination, our imagination is something that God has trust us with. And that's what we have to look at when we talk about faith. Let's look at hope. So when I think about, when I talk about childish things, let's talk about hope. See, hope is... Hope has its place, y'all. I'm going to give y'all this illustration, but everybody's going to have to use your imagination so everybody may get it at a different time. Hope is like being planted, but faith is like being rooted. Do y'all see that? See, it takes hope. Hope is your beginning stages before you even get to faith. Y'all remember your conversations when you were younger, like, I hope I can go here. I hope I can go there. But then it moved into my faith is for this. I have faith for this. I'm believing God for this. See, hope does have its place, y'all. There are some things that we just going to be childish in, and that's not a negative thing. That just means there's some areas that we have to mature in for God to trust us with. So there are some things that you may be childish in. There's some things I'm still childish. I'm still childish in some things. That's just because I've decided not to stress my faith. That means that's a process that I have to grow in to get to faith, to mature to that. So I put away some childish things and I understood that hope was just a planting stage. That's a stage where I'm maturing. Some things are just being planted. The dirt is just on the surface. It's not real deep yet. But then I matured in some things and became faith, which means I'm rooted. Some things have grown in me. I have matured in some things and I've grown in some things. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we're going to move a little faster, y'all, because I need y'all to stick with me. Let's go to Proverbs 13 and 12. Let me show y'all how God has designed us. And I'm going to give y'all this definition. Passion translation, please. When hope's dream seems to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. Y'all know the scripture that says, this is, this is the one in the King James Version that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. That is why it's important for us to move from hope to faith. We have to be very powerful with the words that we use and not saying, I hope that I will get this new car. When pastor has prophesied, go get your new car. Now you've just taken a prophecy and moved back into childish things. And hope, like the scripture tells us, seems to drag on and on. It makes your heart sick. It causes you to go in depression. When you stay in childish things too long, when you're supposed to be in hope, the scripture tells you you're going to be depressed. That's good. That's good. That's good word. So when you are believing God for something, move in that. Appropriate your faith and watch it naturally manifest. Because the moment you stay in hope too long is the moment where you gonna, that thing going to drag on and you ain't going to feel good. You're going to be like, why this thing not happening? What's going on? That ain't on God. That's on you. You never activated your faith. You stayed in hope. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and 1. I'm going to connect this thing for you. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith brings our hope into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Hope and faith are not the same thing, y'all. But you need hope for faith. Faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. That's the definition of faith. Your imagination is the thing that God trusts you with. 
Now you got to apply your faith to it because your imagination is the things you don't see. Take me to the King James version of that because pastor teaching the King James. So I got to, you know, scrub a little bit. Now faith. Here's the definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for. The things you hope for, that's your faith. The evidence of things not seen. Your imagination. You can't quite put your hands on it. You can't quite see it in your life, but you know you saw it on the canvas of your imagination. Now, how do I get there? I got to move from hope to faith. And I can't stay in hope long, because otherwise I'm going to get depressed, and I'm going to think it's God's fault. Did that excite anybody else besides me? I got super pumped about that thing when I said, now hold up now. Now I understand why some things did not happen in my life like I thought they should have happened. Really? Like some years ago, y'all? Years ago. A couple years. Not a couple. A little more than a couple. Maybe about five years ago. I wanted to buy a house. I was like, ooh, I want to buy a house. Started looking at houses, and I was like, ooh, I hope I get this house. I hope I get this house. It didn't hit me until today. My conversation, I hope I get this house. I hope I get this house. Y'all, it wasn't until last year that I activated my faith for my house. I stayed in hope. That was all on me. Because God told me it's a long time ago I can have a house. I can own my own house. I stayed in hope too long and became stagnant. And that was all on me. It didn't matter how many prophecies were released over my life. It didn't matter how many of them I received. It did not matter how many times I said it's happening. It did not activate in my heart. It never moved past my head. My conversation was childish about the things that I thought was God's responsibility to manifest in my life. And here I am holding God responsible for the things that I'm responsible for because I never even appropriated the thing that he gave me. The thing that he said I needed to have to please him. So how in the world was I expecting to receive the thing that God had prophesied when I didn't even activate the thing that was required to please him? What happens when God gives you something that you're hoping for? You will never, you will never glorify him like you're supposed to. You will never give him the accolades that you're supposed to because you think your hopes produce that thing. You think that thing was produced on your timeline. So all it's going to take is for you to take a second and say, hold on now. What was it that was prophesied over my life? What was it that I received? What word did I receive? And that thing, naturally, that thing ain't manifest yet. And it seemed like it's taken a long time. This right here is the perfect time to ask yourself the question. Because our man of God has released that October, November, and December, we're collecting the spoils. God is wrapping things up. So there are some things that you should be activating your faith on that should naturally manifest before December 31st ends. Before this year close out, there's some spoils that we should be act, we should be collecting. But we have to activate our faith. Because if we don't please God by activating our faith, that thing going to continue to be a spoil. And we're not going to collect that one. It's going to be the one left behind. And it's not God's fault. That's how I know my 2020 about to be lit. Excuse me. I got faith for the amazing. <laughs> understand that thing hope it has its place now y'all hear me hope has its place because if you like me y'all if you like me now I know I'm gonna get me a Bentley one day that thing is hope right now I ain't about to put my faith on that for what I gotta get my house first come on now you gotta have a garage to park cars like that in those are automobiles, those are vehicles. But that hope does have its place. It is, it is the encouraging, it is the maturing process, the ING, which means it's ongoing. But our faith, the thing that pleases God, is a requirement that must be activated in our life and we must operate in on a daily basis. Now those things that you hope for, come on now, don't stay on them long. Promise God that. All right, God. Now y'all going to see things move and happen real, real quick in your life. 
You are, you're going to see things happen real quick because when you receive a prophecy, when God speaks to you, you're not going to stay in hope a long time. You're going to make up in your mind that, Hey God, I heard you. What's my next step? And when God tell you to do something that you can't wrap your mind around, you are not going to let fear grip you. You are going to immediately appropriate your faith and watch what God does. That's going to happen. In Jesus' name, that's going to happen. Because when you are in faith, amazing things happen, y'all. Amaz- Let's look at the scripture. We're going we to go to the scripture. I'm going to take y'all through the Bible. Let's look at Moses. Now, I read that, I read that story, y'all, and I got mad for Moses. And why this man keep playing? Why he keep getting mad? You keep saying, do this, we're going to do this. Do this, we're going to do that. Then he takes a rod and parts the Red Sea. A stick, y'all. No, listen, a stick. Now, now everybody in here just about old enough to have gone on a walk with your parents or your grandparents, and they take that little yard stick with them. That if a dog or something come, I don't know what they're supposed to do with the stick, but <laughs> they take the stick with them, or you were old enough to carry the stick yourself. One of the two, one of the, one of them. Anywho, you take the stick with you. Now, if you were on a walk and you ever had to use that stick, you ain't never seen nobody take a stick, hit it on the ground, and then <laughs> ain't nothing happen. You had to make noise with that ah! <laughs> for the dog or something to go away. Get away! Get away! You know, y'all, y'all ain't just hit that stick on the ground and then things happen. But because Moses was in faith and he obeyed God. He heard God's voice, followed the instruction of God, hit that stick, and boom, the Red Sea party. Because he was in faith, amazing things happened. Let's look at the wall of Jericho, y'all. Since when you shout at something and it fall down? I can stand right here all day. Ah! The thing's still right there. But because they were in faith, because Joshua heard from God, on that seventh day, he followed the instruction. They shouted, and boom, the wall fell. I ain't going to try it again because the wall not going to fall. But let me show you all something amazing that happened because faith was in action for two people in that, in that scenario. Now, Joshua was in faith. He was in serious faith. Because I don't know, I mean, who going to think about some stones, walk around them, yell, and really, they're going to fall? Like, that's incredible faith for God to say, screaming something, and fear don't get you. Like, all these people going to look at me if this wall don't fall. Y'all thought, it, like, if this thing don't fall, what these people going to, they're going to look at me like, I thought you heard from God. But in his instruction to them, before they shouted, he said, when you go in, we're going to destroy everything except Rahab and her people. Now, y'all, let me show you something. Let me show you something in this scripture. Let's go to Joshua 2.15. We're going to go to the King James Version. Let me show y'all something in this scripture. Rahab now. I like that lady. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. Go back. The same wall that they shouted and fell down was the the same wall that her house was on. How is it that them people stood back and shouted, and the wall fell down, and her house was still standing. Right. <laughs> Y'all ever play Jenga? Right. <laughs> you pull all these down, and this one's still standing. Right. Rahab had crazy faith to say, I'm a hide y'all. But when y'all finish and y'all got to do all y'all stuff, watch out for me and my family. And her house is on the wall that they're going to tear down. 
the same roof that the spies went up there to get their info, their intel from to get this wall down, is the same house that was spared when they shouted at it. And she was in it, y'all. They was in it. They ain't come down and hide somewhere else. They were in this her house, y'all, if y'all ain't get it yet. Her and her family in this house with a scarf on it so the people know. And they shouted at the thing. I'm still, I'm still wrapping my mind around her faith. Like I'm going to stay in this house on the top of this wall and all of this going to fall down and we still going to be good. Them people promised me that. Now, I don't know about y'all, but my natural mind makes me think, how in the world can this man promise me that I'm going to be safe on the top of this wall and they about to take this wall down? Do you see the amazing things that can happen when you are in faith? That thing got me trembling. That's crazy faith. That is some radical, out this water, some kind of something faith, y'all. I don't even have a word. That's beyond amazing faith. To know that at the top of something, y'all, I, I just keep repeating myself. When I saw that, th- go back to the scripture. Joshua 2 and 15. She let them down by a cord. That means it was high up, y'all, through the window. For her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. Her house was on the wall. I need God to give me a real big illustration on that one. That thing is amazing to me. I'm going to move past it in a second, y'all. I thank God for that. That took my faith to a whole nother level. There is nothing that anybody can tell me that I cannot do. If somebody can stay in their house on the top of a wall and these people follow the instruction of God and God spares them on the top of a wall that falls down at a shout, there is nothing that I cannot do that God tells me I can do. When I put my faith to something, there is nothing that can move me from knowing that God has my back. Shoot. Boy, y'all, y'all about to see me run around this place. Let's close this thing out. I'm, I'm done. Let's go to Habakkuk 3 and 2. That thing shook me out. I'm done. I'm done. Habakkuk 2, 3 and 2. The NIV. Oh, Lord. Oh, okay. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. That was my prayer today when I, when I, after I read that, after that was revealed unto me, God showed me this scripture. And the prophet Habakkuk wrote this. This was a prayer that he wrote to God. And I said, God, tonight, that's my prayer. That's my prayer for my life. And I desire that y'all take that and make that your prayer for your life. That Lord, I heard about you. I heard about you being the same God that spared Rahab and her family on the top of that wall when it came down. I heard about your fame. And God, I am in awe. I'm literally in awe. I am amazed at your deeds, God. Repeat that in this day, God. That same faith that she had, that same miracle that she did, that same fame that I saw in that scripture, God, repeat that in this day and in this time. And make it known. God, make my life so big that people know that it is you that dwell inside of me. God, and in your wrath, in your wrath, God, when you get all them people, remember mercy, God. Just just have mercy. Have mercy, God. But God, that fame that I saw in that scripture, my God, Do that in my life. Yeah. I want to live a life that's beyond pleasing to God. A life that when people come in my company, in my presence, the spirit of God overtakes them. I don't even have to open my mouth. Go back to that scripture. 
That is my prayer for the rest of my life. And y'all just marinate on that. God, I heard about your fame. I heard about you. And God, you amaze me. You amaze me at the things that you do. Now, God, do it in my day. Do it in my life. Do it in this time. And God, whatever you do, don't do it without me. That's it, y'all. I'm done. That right there. That changed my life. That has literally changed my life. And I don't know if it hit anybody like it hit me, but there is something amazing that God wants to do through you. There is something supernatural that God wants to overflow in your life. And there are some things that God has for you that you are to collect before the end of this year. But y'all, we got to do the one thing that pleases him. And that is have faith. We got to appropriate the faith that God has given us. Just believe, because when you believe, amazing things happen. And what that's going to take is you having a relationship with God. So for everybody watching us around the globe, if you don't have a relationship with God, this is your moment to have that in your life, to say, God, I heard about all the great things that you've done. I read about it in scripture, God. And God, I ask you to repeat that in this day and time. God, do it again. Do it again, God, in a mighty way so that people will know that you are God and you are God alone, God. And God, show it to me. But first, God, I got to have a relationship with you and I got to be saved. I got to know that you are my savior. And God, I recognize you as being my savior. Now, if that's you and you watching us around the globe, I want you on right there to put in the comments, that's me. We are praying for you. Say, that's my first time. I'm accepting Jesus as my Lord and my savior. And watch the amazing things that God is doing in your life that he's going to do in your life. God is going to do some amazing things. And then for everybody in here who has not accepted Jesus, as their Lord and Savior, this is your time. This is your moment. If you haven't seen it before, you just saw it in the scripture. God is doing some amazing things and he is going to shock your world, y'all. Your 2020 about to be lit. Excuse me. You're going to have faith for the amazing. Let me keep it, yeah. No, straight up. Your life is about to change in a way that only you can imagine. Only you can imagine it. And can't nobody have it, can't nobody see it like you. Now also remember, because God showed it to you, he has given you the capacity to make it happen. But you got to appropriate your faith. So if you're in here tonight and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to just lift your hand. We're going to pray with you. We're going to celebrate you in your spiritual journey. For those of you joining us around the globe, we want to say thank you so much for joining us. We're about to get out of here. We're definitely praying for you. Make sure before you log that you honor God with your tithe and your offering. And then join us on Sunday for our live services here in our North Charleston campus at 10 a.m. Or if you're close to our Florence campus, get there at 11 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us and celebrate. We trust this lesson has been a blessing to you. Follow us on all social media platforms or call us at 843-767-8855 for other dynamic teachings and prophetic releases.